Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. Before we get stuck into the podcast, why are you, why are you so giddy? Why are you so giddy? You're wearing shorts, you look younger, 100% you've been to Turkey for some sort of cosmetic procedure. Although I can't deny you look good. <laughs> you look a bit puffy around the eyes. Like 100%, this guy's been to Bodrum for two weeks. And uh, and you've got something done. I don't know what it is, but you got something done. <laughs> uh, and that's just that that that's testament to how well the podcast's doing at the minute because we can afford to do that. We can afford to send, you know, some of the crew away to Turkey to to have a facelift. <laughs> um, Dan's going to get a hair transplant next week. He doesn't need it. He has a full head of hair, but you know we can do it. We have sponsors on this podcast, I'm delighted to say. Kicking us off, before we get into the podcast, Punjana. What's that? Punjana. Oh, is Punjana a village in India? No. It's a tea company based right here in Belfast, Europe. Is it still Europe But after Brexit? We're just not in the European Union, but it's still, we're still in Europe. Okay, thank God. Punjana have been making tea. The to- Here's the thing. The Thompson family who make Punjana have been making tea since the 1800s. Which is wild because that is 300, that's 200 years ago. They've been making tea for 200 years. 125. They're making tea for 125 years, but in 75 years' time, we'll be toasting them right here on this podcast in their 200th anniversary special when I will be one. <laughs> I'll be 108 years old and we'll be sitting here doing the Tea With Me podcast and I'll still be wearing blue Nike tracksuit bottoms, a pair of New Balance and a t-shirt that I'm a bit paranoid about because i realized when i put it on this morning it's a bit too tight and i meant to take it off to come and do the podcast but i kept it on and it's a bit too tight but what isn't tight is the loose leaves that float about the bag of punjana tea tom's family have making tea 125 years i mean that's that's it's it's incredible to do anything for 125 years but whenever you're producing the best selling tea in northern ireland then it's all the more impressive They've got Irish breakfast, decaf, or just your straight up punjana. We're fueled by it on this podcast. We don't have a discount code. We don't have anything for you to go and sign up for or anything like that. All we're going to say is just enjoy punjana tea. Just enjoy it. You know, if you're going to have an argument with an ex about custody, have a cup of tea, have a punjana. Make things a little bit smoother. If you're going on a date and you're going out for drinks... And he says, what can I get you? Just say, give me a cup of tea and make sure it's Punjana. And he'll go, we're at a cocktail bar. And that's when, if he says that with a certain attitude, that's when you leave. Punjana, make it a date. (laughs) We're also sponsored by Manscaped. Here's the problem. Every guest that comes on, including today's guest, they they want Manscaped. They want the product. I'm not just making that up. Genuinely, it's a problem where people go, I see you have the Manscaped. I must, I, must, uh, I must get you. And then I really want us to be like, we can send you one, but we don't even have the new one yet because it's so bloody new. The Lawnmower 4.0 Perfect Performance Package. I didn't think I'd remember Perfect Performance Package, but I did. Manscaped is men's below the belt grooming. Look at this bad boy right here. You hear that? That's something Mike... Do- Mike is the only one here who doesn't have to use Manscaped anymore because one of the procedures he got in Turkey was lasered. Laser hair removal everywhere. No eyelashes, no eyebrows, no nothing. But me and Dan, we use Manscaped. Look at this. 20 sec. If you... Uh, if you were someone that needed to show other people your pubic hair in a safe environment, you could forget and then just in the getting out of the car on the way there like done you'd be good as new give it a fade um the perfect performance package is basically here's the way 
Here's the way, by the way, that's wireless charging as well, which Dan keeps mentioning like some sort of robot. Wireless charging. It's wireless charging, wireless charging. I get it, Dan. It's wireless charging. Okay, I don't know what that means. I don't know what that jargon means. Wireless charging. But um, the Perfect Performance Package, here's what it is, right? Now, a lot of guys, when they travel, if they're going on a trip, a lot of people go on staycations at the minute, you know, you're bringing the bog standard stuff. You're bringing deodorant and your toothbrush and a bit of Dax wax. No. If you travel with the Perfect Performance Package, it means you're you're ready for anything. Anything and everything. Kayaking, surfing, uh, romance. Because what it has is this, right? Here's what it has in there. The Manscaped, the Lawnmower 4.0, the weed whacker for your ear and nose hair, which I gave to one of these guys over here with Manscaped sent it because I don't have any ear and nose hair, but uh, and neither does anyone now, which is great. Thanks to Manscaped. Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. And that's what you want. I bring this anywhere. The shops, church. Las Palmas. I've never been to Las Palmas. I don't know why I jumped to that. But yeah, do check it out, manscaped.com. Use the code tea with me for 20% off and free shipping. Honestly, all guys under the age of 100 should be using this product. Manscaped.com. We're going to mention one other thing as well, which is the Patreon. Patreon.com slash tea with me podcast. We don't, plug, we don't plug the Patreon enough on the main podcast. That's more a note for me, isn't it? Yeah, because I do the talking. Patreon.com. You get a bonus episode every week. That's a lie. You get two bonus episodes a week. You get a bonus episode on a Monday that doesn't go out publicly and then we do a live stream on a Friday. And that means you get a wee link, you watch it on YouTube or you can watch it again. My guest this week is Colin Geddes. Live, people jump in, they ask questions. We do it right here in the studio. It's a bit of fun. Also, if you sign up for the Patreon, you can go back for the last, what, nine months, year? The last year, you can go back to a year's worth of bonus material if you want to work your way through that, because sometimes some people discover the podcast late, uh, and and there's no problem there. T- uh, Patreon.com slash Tea With Me Podcast. Uh, bonus stuff happening all the time. We've just introduced a new tier. So if you pay three quid, you get uh, the bonus episodes um, and the crack, the, and the crack was good. If you pay six, so we've introduced a new executive producer tier. It's six quid a month. You get all that stuff, but you get to call yourself the an executive producer of the Tea With Me podcast, which genuinely you can just put on your LinkedIn or your CV. You genuinely will be an executive produ- an honorary executive producer on this podcast. But the, the cool thing about that is you get discount off live shows, which we hopefully might announce something soon, and merch as well. So there's a three-point tier, there's a six-point tier, or if you want to just pay anything else, lower or higher than that, to support the podcast, you 100% can. And it means we can keep... Keep the lights on. I hate it. I, I, 10 out of 10 hate it when people say that. Helps us uh, keep the old lights on. It's electricity that helps you keep the lights on. Okay. Um, anything else, Dan, we need, to, we need to plug before we get into this? Okay, then let's get stuck into this episode. Been trying to get this guy for a long time coming to the podcast, but he's always had a very busy schedule, being a top athlete and uh, being in training camps and all that sort of thing. But he's about to have a massive fight here at home as part of the Fela. He's going to be fighting in Falls Park in his native West Belfast, and he's going to be fighting for a big title, which he exclusively announced on this episode, but it wasn't really an exclusive, because by the time the episode has come out, the news is already public, but it's cool to have an exclusive, like, we felt we felt pretty cool having an exclusive, uh, like, you could see Dan and Mike were really surprised, you couldn't see it on Mike, because he doesn't have eyebrows anymore, but, um, but it was a cool moment, so uh, Michael Conlon is my guest, uh, Michael is uh, a good guest to have at the minute because obviously the Olympics are happening right now and what better guy to talk about his Olympic experience <laughs> than enemy of Vladimir Putin, Michael Conlon. Seriously, very cool episode, top guy. I think you'll really enjoy this episode. As always, when we have a sports person on, especially boxers, if you're not really into boxing, it won't matter for this episode. His chat is very good. Please enjoy this episode, one two one of the Tea With Me podcast with Michael Conlon. Michael, do you drink tea? You, you, you a tea drinker? Like, what's your... I am. You are a tea drinker? Mm. How, like... Barry's tea. 
Hmm? Boris. No, that's Boris for me. I'm Boris? Sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. Right, well, look, I mean, I feel like we should do some sort of blind taste test because you're going to walk away from this being a Punjana man. Um, <laughs> Punjana man sounds like the worst Avenger yeah. out of all the Avengers. <laughs> well, how many cups do you drink a day? Would you be like a... And is there a difference in camp and out of camp? When I'm out of camp, I drink much more tea. When I'm in camp, I try to limit it because I have two sugars, so... Yeah? Two sugar, man. You never cut down? Nah. Like I tried to go to one sugar and I was just like, this is fucking boring. Yeah. I don't like it. I used to be one. My dad tried to get me on the Candorel for a while. You know, we sweeteners? I can't do sweetener in, in no. tea. I can do it in coffee. No yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. In tea? Ugh. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I've, do you take tea strong? Strong. Strong? Mm. Yeah, two sugars. <laughs> strong with two sugars. Why'd you say strong like that? I don't know. <laughs> 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 Someone had I did a gig with um, I did a gig on Thursday And the comedian I was with Got hot chocolate I didn't even know adults You know what I mean Did that <laughs> Still Didn't know it was still a thing Hot chocolate He wasn't hot even chocolate like chocolate as well It wasn't his birthday say, or anything You were going to say like Christmas time Like you may have a hot chocolate Yeah during yeah the, During the continental this market was a, This was a Wednesday night in Botanic <laughs> You're not going to have a hot chocolate On a <laughs> summer's night I didn't know it was your 8th birthday party <laughs> Fucking hell <laughs> Yeah It's <laughs> during the summer as well <laughs> Fucking <laughs> lunatic. Yeah. Uh, look, there's loads I want to I wanna chat to you about, um, loads of things. We've got some questions as well from uh, people on the Patreon. But first of all, um, you're fighting Fela this week. Yeah. It's going to be one of the biggest, the biggest fight, one of the biggest fights of, of, your, my, of, your, of your career? Nah, it's, it's cut, it'd be the biggest fight in terms of the opponent, but in terms of like the crowd capacity and stuff, no. Yeah. But it's a big, but it's a big uh, deal. No, nah, this saying. is the biggest. So this, this is obviously not going out until a few days before the fate. Yeah. So the fate is actually been now confirmed, which will be announced on Monday, if we're past Monday, um, for the WBA interim world title. Exclusive. Exclusive. I mean, now that people will know by the yeah, time yeah. it comes out. Yeah. So what I might do is just release this now. Put this <laughs> up right now. Take a clip from that and put it up and tag everyone in boxing. <laughs> So it's going to show for a big belt? Yeah. Oh, class. When did you find that out? Two days ago. Does that change anything to do with your preparation? Um, It just means I don't have to make the weight below because it's actually the weight above. So <laughs> it's perfect. Are you bulking? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, because I'm, 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 I was uh, getting scrawny more than, more than anything. Right. Um, so I'm just normal now. Right, right, right. That must be pretty cool that it's not going to yeah. be for a big belt. Yeah, it's it's something that I've wanted I've been saying I'll fight for like a, a world title it's a version of the world title yeah it says I'll fight for the world title to fail and uh, it's actually happening when I didn't think it was going to happen so can I just say if um, I ever won a belt I mean it's unlikely but if I ever won a major world yeah if I ever won a major world boxing belt <laughs> I would just wear it like a normal belt like Paddy 24-7 yeah like, <laughs> like Paddy Bonds <laughs> like, like just on my jeans <laughs> 24-7, 100%, <laughs> always have it on the shoulder, always have it. Uh -huh. you have to, why do people leave belts I, in the house? I, I don't bring, see any of the belts I have, I have all them kind of versions of world titles like WBO, Intercontinental, all these. I would never bring them anywhere. Right. <laughs> Until the, it's the actual yeah. world championship, I won't, I won't, I just don't think it's... I, I, I won a, um, a scouts competition whenever I was about, this 100% true, when I was about 11, for uh, for like throwing a welly boot. It was like a Belfast district thing. It was like welly boot throwing. And um, I think I maybe came second or third in it and in my in my weight class. And um, I got a medal for that. <laughs> and I wore class. that for like two, three years. What? Yeah, they, what, they used what, to weigh you. What weight was it? What? What weight were you? Uh, light. It was just like light or heavy. <laughs> and there's like other little fat guys or skinny guys like me and they, uh, the scout master used to scout master. used to weigh you yeah, yeah he used to weigh you and they uh, like put you over his shoulder yeah. and see who you were and uh, I just did, he wear, did he have a, a weight like pointy hat no on? he had nothing on um, <laughs> <laughs> it was at his house and uh, <laughs> but yeah I can, re I can really throw a boot I can throw like if <laughs> like if anyone drops out from the fight that fail uh, just consider getting me chucking the boot a boot thrower, uh. just me throwing boots for well, five it's in a minutes. park so it's like it would fit well <laughs> people probably throwing boots people are throwing worse things around Falls Park 100%. in the past um, but what I was going to say is like it's obviously a big fight it's not an yeah. even bigger fight but what I really appreciate is a couple of days ago you were on Twitter 
just trying to get your own cabin on the standing line coming home uh, coming home from camp i got it like that yeah you got it like got that it. is like people think the lifestyle it must be different people be like oh you're probably coming home on a private jet you know you're probably like you know no. flying on a private jet louis vuitton wash bag <laughs> you know the dre beats on you're just on the standing line and yep. you you book the you book the standing line back and then but it's a long boat ride overnight overnight, overnight uh, eight hours and you were just gonna have to sit in the wee lounge just on, and terrible but am I, I imagine you just sitting in the lounge and being like, he's fighting for like a world title next week. I know. So how did you get how did you get bumped up? Because I saw on Twitter you were throwing the, they were I was the throwing fishing out, rod out there. But they didn't help. It wasn't it wasn't help. They because no one runs their their social media at, at night time. This is so that's down. Um, silly. Yeah. Silly. They're missing a the trick. Mm-hmm. I asked the scouse woman who was behind the desk. I said, listen. Did you say the Scouts woman? Scouts. I was going to say, if you ask the Scouts woman, <laughs> drop my name, because <laughs> you'll get you'll get upgraded uh, to whatever you need. I said to her, I said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm boxing for a world title next week. Do you say this, sorry, of so course. at reception, as you walk on? I, I brought her over to the side a little bit, because I didn't want anybody else to hear what I was saying. <laughs> I says, I need a bed. Is there any chance I get one? And she's looking at me and says, I'll put your name on the list. And I looked at the list, the list was massive. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. all people fighting for world titles. <laughs> I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? So I went, I went and sat there, and I was in the wee, the wee room where you can sit there. You pay to get in, so I paid there. I was sitting away. I was trying to get comfortable. And then I heard my name being called over to make. And I, I, loads of names being called. The boat was packed, most packed I've ever seen it. So I wasn't expecting a room. And I heard my name being called, and I was like, there's no way I'm bottom of that list. Mm-hmm. But I didn't just went, I've got your room. I was like, brilliant. Straight up sleep. Down. So she like the way she said it was like I've sorted you out here. She turned and says, "My daughter used to be a boxer." Yeah. <laughs> I says, "What's your good?" She <laughs> says, "Nah." <laughs> <laughs> Brutal from the man. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh. I got um, I got a similar thing last week. I was doing I was doing a gig. And we always, see, we stand up, we always go to Nando's before mm. a gig. We're usually like on Dublin Road. What do you get? Uh, what, what's my order? Mm. Butterfly, medium, peri peri chips, so we pineapple and three boneless thighs. Yourself? Kind of basic. Mm? That is. Well, not the way I eat it. <laughs> but, not the but, way I eat it. Like, butterfly is just so basic. Like, yeah, I'm throwing a pineapple on there. A pineapple is Pineapple just, makes that, up for that it. Doesn't e- that doesn't even belong in there. Pineapple doesn't belong in hot food at all. I don't think it belongs in a pizza, but you throw it on Definitely the Nando's. It happened no. once by mistake. They brought a wrong order to me, and I just went with it, and I've uh, never looked back. See, it's obviously fate week. All I think about is food, so you saying that to me and repeating that order, I was a bit disappointed to see me, but I was wet. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I could... I suppose I could eat anything I want today. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where I'll go after this. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's, your, what's your number one food that you pizza. crave? Pizza? pizza, pizza's pizza's me. Where from? Have you tried the the new guy, Belfast food blogger? No. Plug. Right. Unbelievable. Right. Dan, order some pizza now and have it ready for yeah. the next half hour. <laughs> not just sit here the whole time. <laughs> no, but um, nah, pizza and uh, I'm actually this week I'll become a, an ambassador of Belfast's new number one wing place. Wing it. <laughs> Nothing funnier than me <laughs> <laughs> when you and Paddy Barnes are on the podcast and just start throwing out this kind of quotes and plugs. I so, love, we were talking about teeth earlier, and I yeah. said, Grant your dental. Yeah. I asked Paddy Barnes when he was on the podcast, Oh, did you get something done to your teeth? And he immediately starts firing out discount codes. The anywhere I talked about, anywhere and, I talked and about. And the found discounts, I'm just waving my flags and I've got a gold card for free wings for the rest of my life. And I'm looking forward to them. They're good. Can't wait for that. But if I go to Nando's, what the hell are Half chicken, hot. Perry chips. No, it's just you said my order was basic and you get a half chicken. Yes, on the bone, mate. Okay, hot. On the bone, you got to... Yeah. All right. I mean, <laughs> three hot wings, just uh, for a little sage, for the, st- for the starter, sorry. Yeah. Um, Perry chips, uh, rice, uh, what do you call the... It's a lot of carbs. Yeah, it's it's big. Yeah. Um, there's, they have new, I forget the name of it, it's a new little kind of like green type stuff. I don't know vegetable? what it is. No, no, no. no. <laughs> vegetable. It's, well, it's the type of vegetable, but Broccoli? it's nice. Tender stem? Did he do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you tried the right guy? Have you yeah. tried that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can just go to Tesco and get you. Raw? But yeah, I got I got sorted out. I um, 
I was going to go before a gig, but nobody was, everyone dropped out of the Nando's beforehand. So I, I'd already left the house, so I went by myself, and there was a big queue. Mm. So I got back in my car, and it was raining, and I thought I didn't want to stand outside. Mm. And I made a phone call and got oh. like, ushered in. Okay. And it okay. was class. And you know what the best thing about it was? I was like, just give me like a wee table, to my, I don't care where I get put. You got it, you got and it. the girl said, a booth. we only have a booth. Wow. So I was just sitting in a booth by myself while a family Fire. of eight waited in the rain. Fire in the booth. <laughs> oh and she was looking at them the whole time. <laughs> my pineapple, just the biggest smile. The biggest smile possible. Um, yeah, fight week must be, like, especially like being like in camp, having to like watch what you eat, all that sort of thing. Mm. Can you still get excited about the fight or are you just like going through hard work at the minute? Nah, I'm excited. Uh, I used to be really bad in terms of on fight week, I would live on my Instagram just looking at the few pages and taking pictures of everything and saying, I'm getting that, getting that, getting that. And then when you weigh in, you never get any of it because you're just like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've had now, I'm not hungry. But I'm not, not at the minute, no, I'm okay. I'm, you, I'm excited. I know, it's, I know it's a hard fight. So, yeah. Well, that's the thing as well. Like, I'm sure it was something like this, you know, fighting in your own backyard at the Fela. It'd be, it'd be easy to take an easy fight. Mm. You know, to 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 know you sort of know that you're going to win, but this is like this is a tough opponent. Like this yeah. will be a fight, you know. Whereas you could have literally fought like me, you know, you could have fought me or or someone else mm. from like media. You know, you could have fought <laughs> Julian Simmons. You could have caught. I had love the of fight. People. One of those fights. Tell you what, you there's something about Julian that I think I don't. I think he could take a punch. I don't oh. know if he can throw. I don't know if he has hands, but I think he he could he could t- he could take a punch. Probably would, like, mm, you could ram, ram, ram a few good shots out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going to be like, did you, were you someone that spent a lot of time in Falls Park when you were, when you were younger? I literally, my mom's house is literally two minutes from the park. Oh yeah? Like literally, like she Will lives, she on, she lives like on the Glen Road. Like when, the, when, when all the concerts are on, my man and dad don't go to the field. They just sit at the back and listen to the music. I was going to say, will your mum be like offering the driveway out or anything, you know, for for car parking spaces? Sorry, I took up. Sold. Yeah, Paddy Barnes is running out. <laughs> Sold. I have to worry about Paddy and my man. He's always, he's always texting my man. There's something weird about that. <laughs> he's just being like, listen, if you ever need any dental work done, I know a place. <laughs> uh, don't get the vaccine, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I uh, I've known you for a couple of years, but only funny like caught glimpses of each other out yeah. and about. I think one of the last times was at Ryan McMullen's gig. He's been yeah. on the podcast before, Custom House Square. And I, ne- I nearly got into like an altercation that night. Why? Because there was a guy. Um, we were like stand. You know what we were like up the side, like yeah. near you, and, and we were standing watching it. That was there with my wife and not a couple we we're friends with, and. Uh, this guy, we've been standing there for like half an hour, and then this middle aged couple came over, and this really rude guy was like, "Oh, so I was standing here," and we went, "Yeah, but <laughs> we have been here. They're not they're not yeah. designated spaces." I was like, well, yeah. "We're sort of here now," and there's other spaces, and the guy went, "No, we won't. We want to stand here," and I was like, well, "You can't. There's room all around us," and uh, like nearly, very nearly, got into it, and then I I say like into it into a big argument. And uh, the guy went off to the bar, and then when he went off, I turned around to his, I was a bit drunk, and I turned around to his wife, and I said, is there not more important things in the world to worry about? I said, what are we doing here? <laughs> and I genuinely made everyone uh, around me think. I said, look, we're having an argument. We're at a lovely concert. Let's have a nice time. It's a lovely evening. You know, there's no reason we need to get into an argument. I said, we'll move over a bit, and you can stand on the other side. And it was genuinely beautiful. And then I followed the guy back to his car and just smacked him when he wasn't looking. <laughs> and let him run like Kicked his head in, yeah, uh, and just ran away. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, and, then, and then I saw your pizza punks as well. Yeah. What do you read? Do you read pizza punks? You're opening a can of worms here, right? I, uh, I do, yes. But during the Euros final, mm-hmm. I went there. And I had the order ready for 15 minutes before the match. The order booked in for takeaway. And then I was going to get them. I think your thought as well, Italian, Euro final. Exactly. Good. Celebrating with, you know, yeah. proper Italian pizza, right? Yeah. So so I was in Belfast. So I was going to get them a mate's house 15 minutes away. Started the football. As soon as it kicked off, I would have the pizza at the door. Mm. They were under a bit of pressure. It was 45 minutes late. 
I I met I put up on my Instagram story that that fucked me over a bit, but I was very much doing it like. I wasn't obviously genuinely annoyed. Yeah. I was just being a bit cheeky. And, uh, hoping for a free one. What? Hoping for a free hoping one. Hoping for a free one in the future, but they I don't think Pizza Punks liked it. Mm-hmm. We got into it just a bit, uh, but i got to say, like, I do rate it. The pizza was nice. I do rate it. Like, I do okay. rate it. What's the weirdest thing you've been asked to like endorse or be an ambassador for? Um, or like got a message from a guy and said, like, oh, mate, I can tell you the best message ever. Right, so I was getting these messages on my on my was it my Facebook at the time or my Instagram, and I kept getting the same message. Hi, Can't, the person who was writing couldn't spell. I am very poor. I need money to fix my. I need two thousand pounds to fix my teeth. I looked at his picture. <laughs> I was like, "Fake butts hanging out of his mouth, like it was just sticking all over the face." <laughs> Can you please send me two thousand bucks to fix my teeth? I really need this money. I am poor and I don't work anywhere. I can't get no job. But it was all like funny spelling and stuff. Yeah. He must have sent it about 17 times right. over a year. Yeah. So it was like he was just non-stop doing it. I was like, I just replied to one day, I don't have that type of money to send to you, my friend. And he replied in proper like text, everything. Yeah. Thank you for your reply. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, after not being able to spell thank you at all the whole time, he replies, thank you for your reply. That's all Perfectly. I wanted. That's, That's all I wanted. wanted. You should have passed him on to Paddy Barnes, who could have sorted him out. Grant Grant Dental. Dental. Yeah. Grant Dental would have been perfect. What's your inbox like? like what's, the main, what's the main message you're getting on social media? Um, is it just well-wishers? Is it all, is it all good? Send, send the boxing glove. Can you send a boxing glove? Send me it. Yeah. I get loads of like, f- like fan mail. It's not fan mail. It's autograph kind of mail. Right. From like Germany, Austria, states. Lo- loads uh, of a lot of states. Nah. No. No. It's all, all the Scandinavian countries. They're all Olympic followers. Right. So they're all looking right. for the Olympic medalists. They've got these much medalists, and they send loads of, loads of uh, photos with them to sign. So you just send them and send them back. But the ones that do my head in is the ones who do not pay for their own return packaging. I'm like, no. Yeah. Nah, I, if you don't buy a stamp, I'm not You sending. appreciate a stamp. Yeah. If you send a stamp, it's okay. But yeah. if you don't send a stamp, you're not getting that. That's really sad. I just picture you in your, in your room just licking like 500 <laughs> stamps that you've had to buy at your own expense. <laughs> no, it's already on the paper. They have it done in there. Don't be saying that. Can you... So I've been watching a bit of the Olympics. Can you... Yeah. Can you just watch the Olympics or is it difficult now for you to watch the nah, Olympics? Uh, my dad's one of the coaches. I have to watch oh, it. Oh, right. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fair. But, uh... Now you see some decisions like today and Kurt Walker just lost. Did He's, he lose? He lost for the bronze medal. But the thing is, so he lost the first round and won the second round and third round and still lost the fight. So I don't understand. Like yeah. Even on the scoring. So like he lost the first round 5-0, won the second round 3-2 and won the last round 4-1 and lost the fight. So Take us back to you at the Olympics. How many years yeah. ago was that now? Eight? Five. Five years well, ago? Well, Rio was five. London was nine, isn't it? Right, right. So five years ago, you go to the Olympics to box for Ireland. Were you a medal hope before that? Like, did you think? So I went to, look, I got bronze in 2012. And when I went there, I wasn't a hope. I was only a kid. Um, just turned 20. And there was no expectation of me. I went and got bronze. And then going to Rio, I was getting in as the, the gold medal favourite. Right. And then the ring happened. You say everything happened. Was that was that in the final? No, no. It, wasn't, it was for the medal. It was quarter final. Quarter final. Quarter final. So in the quarter final, you're in a fight. You're where was your opponent from? Russia. R- Russian opponent. Russia. And you're comfortably winning the fight mm. throughout. Yep. Not really under that much pressure. When the, the when the fight is done, like when. The, the, I, I presume a bell rings bell in the Olympics still. Yeah. Do you think happy like you're no worries at all? Nah, I was worried because how you get the scores that they well, you don't get the scores. Paddy Barnes was up in the stand looking at the TVs to give us the scores and he was shouting down. And what I didn't know is what the coaches and stuff were told like previously that they needed to get help because I was getting screwed over. Um so I, they didn't tell me that, but they knew it. My whole family knew it. And they were like, after the first round, when I destroyed him in the first, 
they were like, no, nah, it's, it's happening here. So my dad was just in the corner. He was saying to me, you need to, you need to stop this guy. So I was just trying to like, destroy him. So because oh, he was thinking they're going to get you on points here. You need, if you uh, knock them out, there, there's obviously no doubt about it. I know the second round they almost did. Um, and the ref stopped it and started wiping blood off me, which wasn't I wasn't bleeding, but he it was his blood. And then wiping blood off him and giving them rules of time to kind of recover. And then the last round, I, I won even cleaner. So at the end, I was confident they had won, but I knew that something was up. At what point did you know something was up? After the first round when my dad was, my dad's never said to me, go out and try and stop him. He just says, do what you do. Which is um, a massive change of game plan as well. Uh, like it, and it, it was working, like uh, yeah. I destroyed him that way as well. I beat him at, at boxing him, I beat him fighting him. So like I was confident they had won, but I knew that something was up from just the way they were, they were, they were reacting in the corner and how things were going. And then, so I always, <coughs> in boxing, like whenever the fight's over, and the ref, like as soon as the bell goes, mm. it's when you see like both guys being like, "Yes, mate, hundred mm. percent." You know, like they're both like, "Whoa, I've done it!" And like you're going, or "Only ba- one is." There's a body language you can tell, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing worse than the guy who knows he's been beat and should just go, "I lost," <laughs> he's but gone. he's like, he's up on the top, <laughs> blowing kisses. He's like, "Yeah, his corner lifting him up," and it's uh. like you didn't throw one punch in this entire fight. I don't know. But, but at that point, at the bell, you still must have thought, well, even with anything that's going on, you've won the fight. Yep. And it's on, how many people are watching that? Like The whole world, the whole world watches that. Upon hundreds oh, oh. of millions. It's the Olympics. Yeah. So you're going to go through to the, you're going to go through the semis, you're hopefully going to win the gold medal. Was it when they called out the decision, or the, they called the decision, is so, that when? Oh, uh, this is by unanimous decision. And then it was all in Portuguese. And then it's heard Azul, which I knew I kind of meant blue. And I went, fuck off. But the finger thing, so I gave up, I flipped the bird, the, to the, the judge. judges. But I had planned to do the fingers way before. That wasn't just like a like a, a spur of moment. It was a spur of moment that happened, but like I remember me and Paddy were actually qualifying for WSB. They were there for the Olympics. They, they, they screwed me over in one fight and I needed to win the last fight. Plus I needed someone who had already beat to beat someone who beat me. And I was like, there's no other way it's happening. And some mar- marigold I did, but I ended up having a hard fight. So at the end of that fight, I won and I had planned because I said, this guy's not going to win. I'm just going to give the fingers to just and say, fuck you, I'm going pro. I ended up winning and the fight, we made the fight that, I mean, I, 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 it could have went really wrong. You had to put it back in your pocket. <laughs> the, fight was that, your thumbs up. the fight was that hard. I didn't do it. And then I go to the ring and Paddy said, you qualified? And I was like, Oh, thank God I didn't do it. So yeah, yeah. that was already in the back of my head. So once it happened, I was just like, fuck you. But did it did it feel like a, did like everything stop? And was it, you know, sometimes like with stand-up, although it's very different, there's obviously less people watching stuff like that, but you still can have like with the adrenaline and everything like mm. that, you can have almost like an out-of-body experience. Like, were you aware of everything that was happening or was it just... No, I was just in it. I was yeah, in it. Yeah. I wish... The only thing I would change is I would have stayed in the ring. Yeah. I would have stayed there longer. And then I mean, remember, would you would you have brought in more signs? Like oh, fucking Mike, yeah. Like that kind of <laughs> <laughs> I remember walking past the judges and I was shouting at the judges, like when I was walking back, they kind of walk out and I was calling them scumbags and all. What was, was your, like, what was the reaction of everyone? The whole the whole crowd was booing. They were like cheering when I was standing there and giving the fingers and stuff. Yeah. But when the decision had called it, the every the whole arena booed and then I get the I walk to do the the TV the interviews, and BBC's first, and BBC look and just go, no, <laughs> no, not happening. RT were just like, <laughs> yes, let's go. So straight over the RT, didn't give me a minute to even think, and I just I just let it go. Like, did you? So, so yeah. You, what did you call them? Cheating bastards. Cheating bastards. Uh, Rotten from the core, right? But, like, doesn't even make it. But, but the way I said it, and everything, it was spitting words. Uh, I even said during it, I don't even know what I'm saying here. So, like, I don't, I, I don't, I, I remember saying, like, someone was telling me, stop cursing. I says, I don't give a fuck if I'm cursing on TV. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one, no one even says you're cursing on TV. I was just like, I don't give a fuck if I'm cursing on TV. Fuck them, they're cheating bastards. 
rotten from the core right to the top. I should have said the rotten from the bottom to the top, rotten from the fucking core right to the top. I was like, what the fuck's going on? It's not that far from the core to the top. <laughs> I was like, what's up? Like, I just started like mumbling and saying shit. And then the realization kicked in towards the end of the interview, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck me. So, towards the end of the interview, in your head, you're going, that just happened. That sort of ca- caught up with you, did it? Did. Ah, uh, and I was just like, and then what happened? What that was my dream. Like, my dream was to be an Olympic champion, always, like, from when I was a kid. And then I was going into an Olympic Games, the number one seed, the, the, the gold medal favourite. And I believe I would have won gold. But that happened, so I was kind of going, ah, oh, fuck me. And then I remember, doing, so that was on TV, all that interview. And then I go around and do the interview with the papers. And all the Irish journalists and all, and English journalists are all there. And talking away. I remember just starting to fucking feel like, what have I just done? I fucked the ring up, cursing and reacting how I did. It's like, not one person is going to want to touch me in this fucking pro game. And I'm back to the changing room, busted a crown in the changing room, was crying my eyes out. And all the Cubans and all were coming for going, you won that fight all this year. So sitting there, obviously didn't have my phone yet. Um, I was like, I have fucked up here big time with my reaction. And then I lifted my phone and went, holy fuck, this is unbelievable. <laughs> went from like fucking 3,000 followers or something to like fucking 150,000 followers. And they're like, what the fuck's going on? So it was like, I just I knew I'd done the right thing. Yeah. And then I'd done the stupid thing and tweeted Putin. And then I started to shit myself. What do you mean you tweeted Putin? I tweeted Putin just said, hey bro, how much did you pay them? Bro? How much did you pay them? <laughs> but I'm not lying. For, I think, for the next two and a half years, even as a pro and stuff, I was shit myself anytime I seen Russians. Because I know, like, they're so patriotic. I was like, yeah, they'll kill me or something. Like, <laughs> You have a guy to check your food. I was just waiting on <laughs> someone like come with a wee knife or a wee pen just going, nope. <laughs> and this idea, you know what I mean? I was, I was like, I freaked out there. I was like, because it got so much reaction and then so much Russians were writing to me saying, how dare you, how dare you talk to Vladimir like that and Putin all this year. And I'm like, like, Putin's our God. I was like, fucking, I have, I've probably fucked up there because... That's could, the thing I'd be most worried about, uh, is, is Putin looking at that and going, oh, fuck that. So I ended up in 2017, when I actually, or 2018 actually, when I moved back over to the UK to train, I bought a, I bought one of them, no one of tops to say Hope one, when they have like, like they'll probably have Barack Obama or something like that there. Yeah. Well, I bought one with Putin. Right. <laughs> just to build and the just, bridge and just put it up just to build that kind of bridge and fix <laughs> fix whatever happened I mean wouldn't it be class if he uh, was front row with the fella <laughs> hope and he stayed for the wolf tones <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that'd be amazing <sighs> oh. so so that I mean that is an iconic Olympic moment because yeah. that I mean Correct me if I'm wrong, but that had never, nothing like that had happened before. See, decisions, bad decisions have happened. And, oh, of course. And, I mean, there's stuff, they're, and they've been like Roy Jones and, and Mayweather and stuff, all these, but no one has ever kind of stood up to the the organization or, or yeah. the man. And uh, well, was there a fallout from it? Like, was there, uh, was I, there any ramifications? They faint me 10,000. I never paid it. Like, well, I told them, to shove your 10,000. But what they tried to do was, so I'm banned from betting by Polly Parr for the rest of my life because I was betting on the Olympics while I was in the Olympics, which right. apparently you're not allowed to do, right. which I didn't know. But I wasn't betting on myself. Yeah. So they have banned me for the rest of my life, but they have obviously alerted the Olympics that someone is betting on, the, on boxing, um, a boxer yeah. who, is, who is in the games. Me and Stephen Donnelly. Actually, Paddy was doing too, but he was doing it from Stephen Donnelly's account. And he ain't <laughs> here. him so bad. Here, here, here. No, because uh, he, he'll be happy I said this. Paddy won, w- well, would have won 28 grand on three three picks. He picked two gold medal winners and just a medal winner. And it all came in. He only had like 78 quid on it. And he would have won 28 grand because Stephen Donnelly got caught. His account got cancelled and he never got no money. So it's only part of it would happen to, but he didn't get he didn't get his money, so he didn't get in trouble. But um, they brought me into like 
a meeting with the Olympic Council and they even but stuff. Were they f were the Olympic people fuming with you? They were like, we could send you home. And I was just I was sitting there. My dad was beside me and stuff, and I was like, I don't give a fuck. Send me home. And then my dad was like, no, because you can go home with hero here after what's happened, but you don't want to go home with disgrace. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like, all right. And I says, all right, apologies. Um, I didn't know. So this is well, what we need to do is you need to be like one of the ambassadors for this for the next Olympics and be one. I says, oh, I no problem. Knowing that I'll never be in the Olympics again. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> I just went away with a warning and Polly Park cancelled forever. Shit. Disgusted. Shit. Proper disgusted. I mean that. That incident probably, like, would you have gone pro anyway just after that? Oh, I was going pro anyway, yeah. You were going pro anyway, but did that help the interest in you? Oh, massively. Uh, no. <coughs> if I could go back now and change it and say you want to go metal, I wouldn't. I have more more of a profile, more, I'm, I'm definitely making more money than any of the gold medalists from that games. Yeah. Like, all, like they've all boxed in my undercards and stuff, so I think that set me up way better than when they go metal and I'm, ha I'm happy <laughs> and then when you said you were going to go pro did the offers just fly in like did right, it? before before I even said I was going pro um, I was still in the games and, and top rank who I ended up eventually seeing them with they had already started trying to reach out to me and get in contact with me and I was like this is, this is brilliant let me ask you about that also you, uh, Mike over there filmed one of your filmed up one of your fights uh, oh did you Oh, did you? I you read that one. Right? Four top, four Burn top and rank. Dive, the top rank. Oh, why? Class. Class. Um, but like, see, when you go pro, right? I was, I was sort of curious about this. Do you have to pick like a nickname when you go pro, or do you have that as an amateur? I refused. I refused to pick a nickname. I don't like nicknames and stuff. Well, a good one is good. A good one's like, good, but like, how can you name yourself? Yeah. You have to kind of. I, people were saying like, do it till someone gives you a nickname. Yeah. Still waiting on my fucking nickname. <laughs> no God, does give me a nickname. You do it right now. <laughs> no. And I'll pay for Whatever we come up with, I'll pay for it to be stitched in the back of your uh, shorts. <laughs> so, no nickname. Um, a lot of people do. A lot of people pick them before. Uh, or probably have them from the amateurs. Actually, no one has them in the amateurs no more. It was a thing when you were a kid. It'd be weird to have one like, in the amateurs. I remember, I remember when I was young. Like, when I was young. I was like, Mick too slick. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that back and has to be a number two. <laughs> Mick so, too slick is fucking great. I know. Mick too slick. Comment. It's good if you win, but if you lose, I know, you're fucking, so if you get beat up, if you're not slick. <laughs> so um, that was that was when I was a kid, but I would never carry out in the pros. Uh, there are some bad ones. I mean, there are some great ones, mm. but like I don't know if I what I would. The student teacher. You know, I just look like a student teacher, maybe something like that. <laughs> yeah, the boot the thrower. Substitute. <laughs> the boot thrower. The boot thrower. Yeah. Uh, or just, I don't know. Master Scout. Master Scout. <laughs> yeah. Or just, I don't know, like, who's Pretty Boy? Oscar De La Hoya? No. no. Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather's Pretty Boy. Mm. I like I like something like that. Mm. I like that. I, I like Sean McCombs, the public nuisance. And what a story behind that Because he came on He told us a story I like it when it's, it's something like that It's fantastic And fits. it's not just like it a fits. random It fits A random type thing What? Uh, well, like, I like Toron McKenna's too What? Like the, the leprechaun? No, it's pa Paddy was leprechaun No, the, no but the, it's like random, is it? I mean <laughs> like, I think it, someone it suggested him. it to him And he's gone like 100 I think I, I think I was one of the ones That suggested it <laughs> But it does It fits him so well What I like is He didn't just do the He didn't just have the nickname No he went for he it He wore the full suit The went full costume it, Which was class He went for it Have you seen the picture When he fought He actually fought my show In New York And yeah. he ended up losing Yeah On his face On his face the well, blood? No, I don't remember. It just looks like he's been in a bad position. Um, <laughs> it's like his nose is just covered, but it's like spreading it down all over his face. God I think I was him. at that fight. Were you? Uh, I think so. I was doing a gig th th that night, and then uh -huh. went to your fight. I think your was your brother at the show. My brother's at all the shows, are. Uh. Your brother's a good-looking guy. Jamie? Good-looking guy. Three brothers, so... I don't know brothers. about the rest, but... I do know that um, when I was at one of your fights at the Odyssey, Jamie was fighting, and it was, as usual for one of his fights, it was just back and forth, back and forth, so many punches, and I remember mm. genuinely wanting to throw my own towel in and being like, 
He's Kevin. too good looking for this. <laughs> for this style of fight. Uh-huh. And if he's watching, I want him to know, appreciate the way he looks. <laughs> you know, I think it's far better. Like, because he he's doing so well for himself, obviously, uh-huh. as a promoter and all. Right, that well, kind so of me and him now we have kind of branched out and we've started um, our own management promotion company. Yeah, and this word in the field. So. He should also get in the model. Like, he should be modeling for something. Like, I could see him doing like a Victoria Square campaign or something. Balaclavas. Some local, but still, no, 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 <laughs> not no, he's, he's you actually you, you read him like you do yeah, read yeah, him a cute guy 100% okay, okay, that's 100% I don't know about your other brothers if you have another brother who's better looking than Jamie <laughs> it's game over <laughs> that, that guy need, that guy needs big marking uh, um, but yeah that, that, that night at the uh, at the Odyssey was the first that was the first time I think I saw you fight and it, it was class I love yeah. I love local fights and I mm. the only thing I, I hate and I will make up for it is I haven't been to the Ulster Hall I'd love to see a boxing match in the Ulster Hall oh, they're good you know I, I, good. I, I've, I've been to stand up and music and stuff there but I'd, I'd love to I'd love to do that it's the like little cauldron isn't it so yeah I haven't boxed there as a professional I boxed there as, as an amateur yeah and lost oh yeah I should not have lost like it was right. terrible did it was you just terrible terrible did <laughs> nah I just just fuck them <laughs> <laughs> like everything fuck yeah, <laughs> um, the well the last time the, you've, have you, is this the second time you fought the field or the, the second, second. The second would have been the third um, if last year had I went ahead but obviously it didn't so this is the second time uh, fighting in the field and I'm excited yeah I mean here's, here's my dilemma with this fight mm. I'm doing a gig on Rathlin Island on Saturday and Sunday this week. Yeah. The show's two o'clock and it's over at four on the Saturday. So the yeah. But then also on, we're doing the Sunday. Oh, the fight's Friday. Fight's Friday? Friday. Then I think I might have to go. Okay. What time What time will you be on it? I'll not be on the like after 10 so oh, you don't shit. need to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't like, I always say this anytime we have a box on, we're like, I it could be the best fight in the world coming yeah. from America or anywhere else. Can't wait, can't stay awake. I'm not staying awake. No All way. fights need to be on a half seven. They really do. Like start I, the undercard at four. See, so yeah, I boxed on Manny Pacquiao. I was on the card in Australia. Oh yeah. And they were doing the fights to fit American time. Right. So I was in the ring at one o'clock in the day. And did you have enough time to get acclimatized? I was there two weeks before, so I was there at one o'clock in the day, and it was the best best ever because I fought and then I went out and then by nine o'clock I was that you gone don't. I was like nah, yeah. I need to go home yeah 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 it's time so <laughs> it was like perfect and then I had to fly out the next two days all this right yeah so it was it was brilliant at the uh so I I, I, I performed at the field about it was one of my first paid gigs about 12 13 years ago how did it go it was class yeah it was unreal it was in the fit it was in a tent, in a marquee tent beside Kelly Sellers. It used to be like a big empty sort of square oh. there. And it was in a marquee. There was only about 200 people at. Like obviously their gig, especially their comedy, yeah. got huge. Uh, but this was, I was just doing like 10 minutes. I was like new to stand up. Because I was doing a show on Fail FM. Remember, the, do you know the, oh, the yeah, radio yeah, station? Yeah, yeah, Conway yeah. Mill. Yeah, yeah. So I used to do a radio show on there when I was like a student. And um, I got asked like me and two other fellas that did stand up did a radio show and they said, look, with three comedy nights, three of you can do the local five yeah. minute spot. And it, it was unreal. It was so good. Tim McGarry was on and there was a guy from down south who uh, headlined it. Um, and then obviously Paddy McDonald's doing it this year, yeah. my mate Paddy. Um, and he's bringing, you know, a couple of guests with him, you know, so who knows? Are you going on? <laughs> who knows? Paddy. Paddy's, Paddy's doing the fail. And no, no, no. Look, he's, He's already booked a couple of people to, to, to oh. come, but he's not announcing. Wow. Hmm? He hasn't mentioned you. No, I don't know. He, oh, well, oh. Just, let's just wait and see. Okay. <laughs> let's just wait and see. I don't know if he said him on. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, but that'll be class. I yeah. can't wait for that. Is the atmosphere at that unbelievable? That's probably the best. The best of experience. You know what? Last year, more people will actually probably get on to me about the music and the playlist. Yeah. Natural <laughs> fate. People are like, 
between the rounds, you know, I was just, no, I was off my head and I was going mental. <laughs> we got up no stars, <laughs> they going crazy. And I was <laughs> like, like, okay. You had that moment that uh, during that fight and you're like, what was it when I threw a punch? He's like, no, when bits and pieces was on before it. <laughs> I don't even, I didn't even stay for the fight, mate, but honestly, uh, that playlist, <laughs> do you sort the playlist? No, it was the DJ had done it. It's John Boy or something. He, I think yeah, he yeah. put the playlist on Spotify. Right. The right. Feel of Fight Night playlist. <laughs> so you can get the playlist from last year. Um I think I think he's probably sober up a bit now and like proper like went to like sober up and uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing for the feel of him. <laughs> I'm gonna be totally honest. Like, like the music's like because a, a little uh, bit more like James Blunt, he, he like Ed Sheeran. Uh, he needs to kind of keep that that vibe. I mean, I remember once seeing one of the Klitschko's walk into genuinely true Ronan Keaton singing him into the ring with Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. Oh. One of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Amazing. I would do it. I would do it 100. percent Can you sing? What? I'm trying to want to find out at the feel. <laughs> That's here. <laughs> you raise me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, like bit that. like uh, someone whose favorite song is Connor Burns. That's Burns' favorite song. <laughs> oh, you raise me that's up. Favorite song. Oh, 100 percent. Me and Burns, could you edit? Favorite sing, song. Sing you into the ring. I think that would um, be good. Yeah, I mean, the the last feel of fight was, you know, packed. Mm. Huge night for you. Top rank, obviously, behind it. Um, Mike was out of film and said it was just unbelievable. One of the bigger stories from that than the fight was probably the reaction to music. You were talking mm. about the music. About the music. And um, and there was a big, I suppose, controversy. I don't know how big it was for you, but certainly if you read like newspapers or yeah. articles online, that's the thing people were, fo- instead of you. No, that, like, was, that, was, that was St. Patrick's Day. The feel of one was all right. The feel was just grace. Uh, let the people sing. And then we had chili peppers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and here, the famous Irish songs. Well, you, you, <laughs> me, you mentioned You mentioned Klitschko, like you know what I mean. So he he was on the community before. Don't stop. Oh, so, oh what a great song! Like so, uh, that's what I done at that time. But no, the, the other one that was uh, that was St Patrick's Day, and listen, I got I got mad, mad backlash. I was yeah. like, people, like, people can take it whatever they don't want to take it. It was. It wasn't in a bad or kind of evil way I was using the music or, or a spiteful way. I was using the music because I knew what way the crowd would react. And they had a, an opponent to me who I know that I could probably break mentally. So I broke him. I remember walking to the ring and seeing him in the ring and he was just like, what the fuck am I in for? <laughs> it's like, what's what's going on here? Yeah. And uh, I, the, reaction was, the reaction was crazy. It wasn't, it wasn't expected. And uh, I think it was a bit unjust. Maybe I should have thought about it a bit more, but I just thought about the atmosphere and, and, and the crowd, which I thought would uh, be unbelievable. At what point did you realise it, it, it had become a thing? Straight after or...? or? Um, uh, straight after. It was people on Twitter going absolutely crazy. I remember someone saying, I said, so fuck, it is what it is, this music. Did you did um, you ever think about like maybe balancing it out with like you know the Billy size, boys um, or <laughs> the size, maybe the feel you know what I mean it would fit well. <laughs> you know what I mean so. I mean it's um, something that like like I I'm very much like each to their own, but yeah. it's just it, it it's you don't want to see a, de- a debate that then becomes. Not about sport. No, it's a, it's a, about it's the thing. It became completely different. I remember um, Steve Nolan called. <laughs> it was on his show, I think, for two weeks. Um, it was probably his, uh, up there with the Bobby Story situation mm-hmm. for, for, for Steve. <laughs> and uh, I remember, because I was in America, obviously, I remember him calling for my arrest in, <laughs> in Dublin Airport. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to go to Dublin Airport and arrest this man for inciting or oh, hit and failings and all that stuff. Nolan like, the Bounty Hunter? <laughs> <laughs> With the big shades on the vest. Let's see. Who's Beth? <laughs> if he's the Bounty Hunter, who's Beth? 
Uh, I love it. I love I love the idea of you just land them back after that trip and you just stand them on the runway <laughs> with the cuffs flanked by the PSNI. <laughs> um yeah, I mean that that was just a huge a huge deal and yeah. did you after like after it did you think right well I'm not going to do this again or I'm going to do that different or did you think oh, did you think it. you'd made a mistake? Not, 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 not a mistake that to come out to music. Like people think, you no, know, did you regret doing that? See, for what I experienced walking to that ring and that moment, I don't regret it one bit. It was amazing. But do I regret the kind of maybe wrong decision of using it for the, the, the people back home and not thinking of, of what the reaction would be and the people who would get offended, which the whole world's offended nowadays, so I can't really control that. Should I have done it? Maybe not. Do I regret it? No, because there's no point in regretting anything in life once it's done, really. Yeah. Um, would I do it again? No, because of obviously I know what the kind of the backlash would be. Yeah. When you when you have your next fight in McGabry, w- thanks to Nolan, will will what will you walk into? <laughs> this one, um, <laughs> this one's gonna be this one will be good. Um, I'm gonna have. Uh, kinda, Would you consider like teaming the Wolf Tones up with like, you know, a David Guetta or a, you know, I'm putting a little I'm not bit a of dance music spin. guy, you know. Mm. Mm. Be a bit of Dermot Kennedy. Oh, that'd be Ooh. class. I, I, I'm big into my pre-show playlist, mm. big into it. And I used to always have uh, rap, always, at these shows. So the first time I was doing somewhere big, like Ulster Hall or somewhere like that, I had like a full like Kanye, Drake, Jay-Z, mm. 2 chains playlist. And then I realised that it just didn't work. It's not because the vibe. that music ends and then I walk out and go, Hello! <laughs> 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 uh, uh, you know it just doesn't work so now my playlist is very much like you know a bit of Bruno Mars uh, the Rolling Stones Tudor oh, Cinema Club we've got Rolling Stones is on mine as well oh yeah what song mm. Satisfaction Paint mm. the Black mm. and uh, The Devil was it Symphony for Symphony the Devil Symphony for the Devil yeah. no Sympathy for the Devil Sym- I said Symphony for the Devil which is also also sounds like a great song yeah. I went to see the Stones two years ago it was the best concert I've ever seen in my life yeah, definitely. Crook, Crook Park. So, in the amateurs, you used to warm up. Obviously, when you're in international tournaments, you warm up in a change room, and there's loads of people, or loads of different countries. And I used to like be big in the like Tupac and stuff, and just think about the lyrics. They hit them up, mm-hmm. and I used to have a blast in, in this change room. White guy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this fat, you know, <laughs> I mean, so it's like. You're like the guy on the bus uh, with the the phone. Uh, just and other people are like, "What if we don't want to listen to this?" You're just, you're just. Uh, <laughs> so I was just, I used to have a blast, and then I was like, oh, you know, "I don't really care what people are gonna say." I think, but I probably grew out of that a bit, and just yeah. like I, I, I just do my own stuff now, and uh, I like my own music. When people play music on a bus, you know, mm. just like a public bus, and there was just a guy playing music on his phone, you were annoyed about it, and you're like, you shouldn't do that, but there were always bangers. Mm. There were always bangers. Mm. The fellas playing Maniac 2000 <laughs> on his 5210, and you're like, you shouldn't do that, but playing, also turn it up. Playing Snake. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a, um, a rumour around my school that if you got, uh, if you completed Snake, or like got a certain mm. score, Nokia just gave you two free phones. <laughs> That was the rumor. Like it obviously started as Nokia gave you a free uh, phone, and then someone spoofed and went, "It's actually two free phones." I don't know if that if anyone ever got uh, that, but uh, but yeah, I mean, there's no. Oh, sorry, we we have. I was just would say there's more I want to ask you, but we have a question about tattoos. Yeah, you have any tattoos you regret getting? From Jonathan Shear, correct? Yeah. yeah mm. Do you have any tattoos that you re- you regret? No. Many tattoos have you got? Two. Olympic rings and. Rosary beads. What age were you when you got them? So, funny story with the rosary beads. I was sev- just turned 17. I told my dad, I'm going to go and get a tattoo. I says, I want to get rosary beads in my neck, but I think I'll be too sore. I says, I might get them around my arm. 
I was like, I'm get that no fear chain on my arm. <laughs> oh, the sign of any legend. I was like, <laughs> I remember going to the tattoo place and sitting there and this is, he says, well, what are you getting? I says, I want this and I want to get a rim of neck, but you know what? I heard it's too sore over the, the, the collarbone, so I'll probably get it around my arm. And he says, you're getting it around your neck because if you get it around your arm, you'll, you'll regret it. And I was like, all right, fuck it, let's do it. So I've done it. I remember walking in with dad, he came in the store and he goes, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> he was like happy for me to go and get a tattoo, but when I actually got it around my neck, he's like, you'll never get a fucking job now, you fucking idiot. <laughs> That's why he, he coaches so well at the boxing. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you never get a fucking job now, you idiot. I says, wait, what do you mean? I think it's near going to cry. I was like, I don't need the job. I'm going to be a boxer. Is she a fucking idiot? <laughs> Get up a fucking stairs. That's the trailer for your movie. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. So, like, he was, like, hanging with only from a man. Like, I probably would regret this if it wasn't from a man because she was like, I think it's lovely. You know, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's like, my dad was like, yeah, you can see how to me. Have you bought like the shirt? It's a necklace. Oh, tattooed, yeah. It was like right a round, though. Necklace. I was like, when am I really going to see it? And he says, you can see it when you have a t shirt on. If you had a shirt on, you won't see it, but you're not going to be in a job with a shirt. I think, like, what? <laughs> what an insult. What? What, <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? So. <laughs> That's, that's, the most, was, that's the most Irish parent thing to say to uh, your kid. You're never being a job with a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing so, t-shirts for your whole Fuck the hell. <laughs> the, oh, well, uh, did you get the Olympic rings after London? So uh, the Olympic rings, they were... You try and that, cheese grated them off that, after Rio? Nah, that was gold. That was gold. See, getting them. So we came back from... I think we raved back in from London on the Tuesday. Me and Patty. I got the rings tattooed on my side on a Thursday and went there beef on the Friday <laughs> it was a gold touch it was just like yes yeah. I'm that guy yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. him you were all these so, <laughs> yes yeah, you know that's all I'm saying like for real I might get I might get that done in the next couple of weeks every single one of my mates were like going and getting hands tattooed on my living rings <laughs> Because <laughs> everybody was in a beef It was only like a yeah. few days after They were all watching the Olympics And I was walking into like Joe Spoons going Yeah, free drinks, please <laughs> I'm, I'm 100% doing that uh, I'm sure it's... they get the Olympic rings tattooed down my arm And then when anyone asks I go, it was a few years ago Don't want to talk about it <laughs> Men's curling <laughs> Didn't make a squad like that uh, I was there, what, what were you doing? I was uh I was a plumber in London 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I was in London 2012. What for? A show. West End. Uh, Matilda. You know the Olympic Village? Well, see all the electrics. <laughs> I done them. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, I, wanna, I, I, I want to come see you. I thought the fight was Saturday. It's Friday. No, it's Friday. It's Friday. Uh, if you want to go... I'm sure Jamie will, after your lovely comments, he'll so I either it. want to go to that or if Jamie would prefer, me and Jamie could just go out for dinner. <laughs> I love to go to Nando's with Jamie. He'd probably prefer it. Honestly, good looking guy. He doesn't like, like, you look like a little bit Spanish or something mm. as like, you know, family. Like you've got yeah, that, yeah. you got like that Mediterranean kind of look. Oh, and I was Italian for the last yeah. couple of weeks. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's been, it's been part do of my family. Do you get like, do you get abuse on social media? Oh, it's unbelievable. It's amazing though. Like it's like, so, I'd done it taking the piss, right? So at the start, I was like, oh, sure, I'm Italian anyway. And I seen the reaction, like, everybody going, fuck you, I hope you get knocked out in your next fight. And I was here. So I had to go into, I didn't know, it was like Victoria Station, because I had to go in, my, my ear was blocked and needed to get it cleared out. So I rave up, up there. Victoria Station? Uh, oh, it was over in training camp. So it was like, yeah, the, the tr station I was going to was Victoria, so it was around the corner from it, Eerology or something it was oh, called. Oh, I thought you just met someone at a train station. No, 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 my ear was blocked when I was training, so I was like, I need to go and get this cleared. So yeah. got in contact with this place, got the train up to Victoria Station, and I looked at my phone and went, Bucking and Bucks, right there. Never seen Bucking and Bucks. I walk around, I'll go around and see it. So I walk around, and I went, I would take a picture and then say, uh, here supporting Italy. And then I went, mm, actually, I'll just play nice off and video myself starting to say Buck and Paws. So I'd done that there. And the reaction and it went off even more. So I just, I just Wait, people it. wouldn't like that? 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like on so, when I put it on social media, the reaction people was like, I was like, why are they, why are they baiting? They're all messing about. Like, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't actually give a fuck who wins. Yeah. It's, it's nothing to do with me. I, I could 100% uh, see you just, the queen just comes out of the balcony and you just... <laughs> <laughs> so I stood there done, done the other time A few people were giving me looks like But I was just like Fuck it And I walked I just walked away And like I sat there For like that, that little bit of the video Done that And then walked away yeah. It's like That's all I came to do um, Got the ears cleaned Went back Put it on social media It went off So I just says Fuck it I'm going full Italian here Straight on the Amazon Order a Italian t-shirt Ordered the Italian t-shirt, um, gel my hair back, fucking started <laughs> like playing Pavarotti. It was fucking brilliant. It was unbelievable. The reactions was just brilliant. So uh, obviously English people and then when they lost, I put that little video up where some fella dancing I just imposed my face on it. And uh, people were like, I hope you fucking die and all this here. And like, hey, you Irish potato picking bastard. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, some of the reactions. So I... Uh, in England, when I'm in training camp, I know he, st he stays with me actually. It was, it was Geordie Shore. Yeah, yeah. So you know Arn from Geordie Shore. Yeah, he's a MMA turned, fighter. No, he's turned boxer. Right. So Arn's actually, he actually lives with me. So right. he was texting me through the whole time, oh, it's coming home and it's coming home. And then when it lost, he wouldn't answer his phone. So he was up in, he was up in Newcastle and he was coming back down on the Monday. So I, or Sunday evening. So I had set the Alexa, which is in his room, and I says, Wake up call, 6 a.m., Pavarotti. <laughs> wake, wake up call, 7 a.m., Pavarotti. Wake up call, 8 a.m., Pavarotti. He's, he's sitting there, he's laying there. <laughs> and, uh, obviously, he comes in at 1 o'clock in the morning because he's driving down to Newcastle. So I'm sleeping. He says, fuck, I woke up. I say, the fuck is this? No, Sundorma. No, Sundorma. And he looks up and he sees fucking Alexa. He says, off. He goes back asleep. <laughs> and then... Fucking seven o'clock comes again and again. And it's fucking thing. He says he's disgusted, broke his whole sleep up. He's already in a bad mood from them losing. He fucking that. I, I was going to do more though. He had like white flip flops. I was going to paint them like green, white, and red and like just fucking. Uh, I just can took he, the trolling up. Can he box? Real. He's getting good. He's getting good. Um, He's not there yet. He's not going to be, you know, your world champion. Yeah, yeah. He's he knows what he's in it for. Um, those type of Jake Paul, all those type of guys. There's big money in them fights now. So yeah, yeah. so why not? And you know what? He has a lot of heart. He has a lot of dedication because he showed it in the training he's been doing. But to have the balls to go and fight MMA when you're coming from TV and yeah. the four thousand or eight thousand people was ever in the arena when he fought. All wanting the same lose. Yeah, yeah. It takes yeah. a lot. It takes a lot of yeah. courage. Like. A lot of respect for people doing it. I'm actually fighting Barra Best next Tuesday. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell you like it's going to be tight. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to stop him first. Um, Barra I Best, don't know. And then if I win that, um, he can bring the thunder. <laughs> and that's, lightning. That's true. That's true. Right. But I think it's going to be sleep, and I'm forecasting oh. a KO. Okay. People okay. will believe this and go like, "Where can I get tickets for this, mate?" <laughs> Hey, we can make money. Let's we do could it. make so much money. Colin we? boxing promotion, so you know we're ready. To, and I can spend a bit of time with Jamie. Yeah, yeah. Um, ready to do the show. <laughs> <laughs> Where would we put that fight? I reckon we could sell three hundred tickets for that in North Down. Yeah. Would Barbie? Oh, he'd it'd be hostile environment. He would. He's, he's a West Belfast one. Is he? Is he West Belfast or, or uh, North Belfast? I, I think he. Mm, I don't want to say. I, I know. Look, I know that you get into murky waters there. You say mm. someone's from the wrong place. Um, I don't. I don't know which one he's from, but he wouldn't want it on my turf. Like, I'll. I'll go to him. Mm. I'll bring the fans. Okay. I'll bring. You're. Him. You're the draw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know now. Actually, he. he I fight any local. He's been up. The, he's been up to pen for pen rankings after Frank Mister retired. Like, after what? Frank retired. Yeah, that's true. Although. I could say, see, I'd say that for a laugh and then like would make the fight and all and then he'd be like, by the way, I box for Ireland up until under 16 level and he'd just spark me out in the first round. Have you ever seen the says of Frank Mitchell's hands? No. They're like shovels. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> Why have you been looking so closely? <laughs> no, because it just reminded me, like, we're talking about weathermen here. And like bear paws? I remember talking to him before and I was like, is this like Barry McGuigan with a mask on or something? Like, what is that? <laughs> His hands are like... 
really like, big fighting hands. Like, yeah, I could see Frank throwing a jab. Like, he could throw a jab, and then takes a lot of jabs and talks a lot of nonsense. But like, fair enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what you want to do is get him fighting Nolan, the big, yeah, the big breakfast radio guys. Don't know who I would sway with. Who would you? You're you you coach Frank, surely. I need to find a, be- a better one. Paul Clark. Paul Clark? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't strike me. No offence to him. As a guy who's going to bind him uh, the ring and spark someone out. Who's controversial? I need another controversial figure here. Hmm. Uh, Bryson. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's not heavy enough. He's not heavy enough. That's true. He's not heavy enough. <laughs> oh. uh, fights this Friday. Going to be for a big belt. Which I love that we have an exclusive that we can't exclusive. mention. Most. Exclusive. It's an exclusive now in the room. I used to be the non, the only non people from my family who know at class. the minute. That's that's pretty class. Although Mike tweeted it out from our account. That's, uh, um, so that'll be good. <laughs> and uh, and then what? Like as soon as this is over, do you take a break? I'm going on holiday. Uh, what are you for? Nice two two week holiday to Corfu. Oh, uh, bit of Greece. Yeah. Yeah, and food, just loads of food. Can't wait. Love Greek food. Class. All right, checking all the little food spots out. Sean sent them over to Sean, and she says, "Ah, oh, you're making weight because they're disgusting looking, mate." Yeah. I think, uh, fair enough. Seafood, a lot of seafood there. Mm. I like seafood though. I'm a seafood man. Um, big in the pancakes. <laughs> like a bit of pancake. <laughs> okay. You know what? They do good fucking pancakes around here. What do you call that <laughs> little spot around the corner? Skinners. No, there's a new one. Not, not bakery. Is it a bakery? No. It's like Joxer? Joxer. Bang. Joxer. I think you just and put home. yourself in your ambassador, David. And home. And homebird. They do good. They, they, they do good pancakes. I've tested them out. I've tested them all. I see your system here. You just mention every cafe in Hollywood <laughs> and see who comes in with the DM. <laughs> Slay we'll sort you out with a few pancakes before you uh, But What do you get with yeah. putting pancakes? Oh, I, it you know depends. I, uh, do you know I just like uh, maybe go. certain bacon. Here, I'm a fan. I never was a fan. Yeah, but I actually am a fan, and that's because of them. Yank when when you're over in America, the Yanks they love it, and I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know. And then I tried, and I was like, whoa, yeah. that's actually very good. But Biscoff, I'm a big Biscoff fan. On pancake, but yeah, you're not gonna have oh. bacon with that. Nah, you, you can't. You can't. I have before. Yeah. It's not bad. I bought a 2kg tub of Biscoff a few training camps ago. Yeah. Seems like a lot of... A few training camps ago, I remember, like, I ended up halfway through the training camp. I looked, you know, the tub was near done. I was like, why am I not making weight? Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> f- fuck, this is why. Get this out of my house. I had the Bennett, but I, I love it. Everything, anything Biscoff. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you as soon as this fight's over, like a couple of weeks down the line. I can just see you like working out with like two tubs of biscoff and then winking at the camera. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers uh. for coming doing the podcast. Appreciate it. No worries. I've been a fan. I'm well, loving it. I'm watching them all. See when you like see back in the day when me and Dave did Boy Town. Yeah. And then every once in a while, like on Instagram or Twitter, you would like you would like a thing. Yeah. We loved it like. Genuinely. Because there was no like, there was no one well known like. Dave's was burning a, as well, like. What? Dave is burning as well, like. Nah, he's it's a duo, like you just need to be together. You need to work together, like. Yeah, we would, but just there was just some issues. Oh, okay. We did that as a joke. See, when we stopped doing Boytown, we were like, let's pretend that we've had a bad fallout, and then loads of people like, and then we started mentioning. He's got tattoos. I have a tattoo. We had a bet, and the loser had to get a tattoo. I lost. I've got the tattoo. I have the tall father tattooed in the back of my leg. Um, 100% true I've shown it in the last like, four podcasts I've got to stop doing that because Dan said we could get some sort of uh, complaints because I'm always just taking my trousers down for guests um, but yeah I had to get a tattoo and if he had lost the bet I was going to make him get a portrait of my dad's face on his arm but from when, when my dad was a younger man so it wouldn't even look like my dad now like Dave wouldn't have known him then and just be like who's this guy your age you've got that down your arm and Dave would just have to ask my friend's dad uh, um, that's but, ballsy like but yeah we, we pretended we'd had a fallout and then loads of people started to believe it and then me and Dave just got sad because we were like oh we're best friends and people actually think we're falling out so mm. nah I love him he, I mean he has some 
controversial political views, but uh, but a lot of, and views on race. Uh, but you know, great, hell, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it, Jesus, I, I what I race? Just, what do you say? Hundred meters or two hundred or, mm. or 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 marathon? What is it? One or two races. Let's just say he said we could do without. So um, so. He, <laughs> <laughs> And they are no, 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 no. Look, look you, you just gotta let him do his thing. You yeah. gotta let him do his thing. He's just, uh, he's just racist, but he's funny. He's funny. Like he's funny, funny guy. Um, big shout out to him. Um, no, yeah, we used to when when it was like boom, Mike Conlon like this post. We we would we would love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Didn't, I don't want to make it sound weird. Like we didn't like have a uh. make it seem like we had a party. <laughs> we didn't. We would just text each other. And yo, go, yo, Tim. Guess what? <laughs> they got it. <laughs> we booked the merchant boat. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it was so not cost effective. Um, yeah, look, I'm delighted you're on the Gold Coast here. Cheers for coming down doing the podcast. I'll see you on Friday. And let me know what it is you want me to sing. And we'll, we'll make it work. Okay. Okay. Can you sing Celtic Symphony? <laughs> 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 uh, Cheers, man. Appreciate it. Come on.